Hello and welcome back to Like Maria. We've started a new series of videos for A-level English language. Today we're going to concentrate on spoken language acquisition. Um, so this is looking at how children learn language and we're going to concentrate on cognitive theory. So this is one of the theories that it will be useful for you to talk about in the exam. The father, really, of cognitive theory is um, a chap called Piaget, um, and he is the one that you will want to know most about. So we're going to look in more detail at Piaget's theories today. So Jean Piaget did a lot of experiments concerning the cognitive development of children, and this means the way children learn to think um, and build up their intellectual development. Um, he published a paper early in the 20th century called The Language and Thought of a Child in 1923. And the main thrust of this paper was that children need to understand concepts in order to use particular linguistic constructs. So, for example, um, in order to understand, um, in order to be able to use language in the past tense or future tense, they must have a concept of the time and the time now being different from the time before and after. Um, this also applies to things like sizes of things and positions um, of things. So really to sum up, um, they need to know what they're talking about in order to use more complex linguistic constructions. Piaget um, studied um, young children and he felt able to divide up development into these four key stages. Um, they are the sensory motor stage, the pre-operational stage, the concrete operational stage and the formal operational stage. And these stages all reflect um, the capacity for children to understand certain things. We'll come back to these in more detail um, in a couple of slides time. Just before we do that, I'd like to talk about some of the difficulties with looking at language in this way. So firstly, Piaget is quite often criticised for having worked with a very small sample. Um, these are the early days of linguistic experiments, etc. Um, and he, I think, worked um, mainly with children known to him and indeed his own children. There was some um, concern about how he selected these children in that they came from quite a narrow um, social um, group. Um, and also um, he has been criticised in that his theory fails to recognise um, that individuals develop um, at different paces and in different ways. So some might have some aspects of later stages early on, but still be um, very um, concrete in their thinking. Um, and this is one of the things um, that kind of underpins his theory, is looking at moving from concrete to abstract thought. Um, but it is in the case, certainly amongst adults, that some um, abstract thoughts are very difficult to understand in certain areas um, of study. Um, and some people have a particular talent for doing that, um, but perhaps their linguistic abilities um, don't match that. So there's all sorts of um, difficulties in really pinpointing levels and moments at which people appreciate um, abstract ideas. So a really good um, breakdown of Piaget's stages can be found on this website here, Psychology Notes Headquarters. I've provided the link on the next slide. Um, but here you can see um, that Piaget is saying people um, move as young children from this kind of coordinating of senses with motor responses. So seeing something and um, physically labelling it um, or asking for it or pointing to it um, to a more sophisticated way of thinking, enabling the child to use proper syntax um, and grammar and explore things imaginatively in the pre-operational stage. Um, and the move from sensory motor stage to pre-operational stage is possibly um, one of the biggest moves um, that children make. So by the time they are year seven, um, most uh, seven years old rather, they are mostly able 
um, to express um, abstract ideas and thoughts, but the sort of complexity of maybe the more intellectual thoughts um, is still missing. Um, here in the concrete stage then, um, concepts are attached to concrete situations, so this space, time and quantity are beginning to be understood. Um, but we have to wait for 11, 12 plus in order to get the really um, proper abstract theoretical thinking where um, children are able to um, give opposing arguments and imagine hypothetical um, situations and plan strategies. So all of this and much more detail can be found um, on this website here. Um, another useful um, website is this Very Well website and I think this diagram really helps show um, what the different stages of development are. Um, here a child is able to um, ask for water and perhaps label water. Here in the pre-operational stage the child is able to think about water and point to the water and observe someone else's need perhaps. The concrete operational stage where a child is able to measure water and see which glass has more. And then, of course, the formal operational stage where the child is able to consider concepts like being having a half empty or half full glass and perhaps relating that to someone's um, emotional or perceptual um, personality. That can be found um, and some more information on the Very Well Mind website, which has got lots of useful information about the different um, psychologists and linguists involved in child development. OK, so coming back to Piaget's ideas, he is very clear that children learn by exploring and questioning um, the world around them and they must, inter they must develop intellectually and then they are able to use the language associated with those intellectual ideas. So we're going to look now about how to apply this knowledge to a exam question and in particular look at a transcript because this is what um, many A-level questions ask you to do. So let us imagine we have this transcript here. Dad, so what did you do today? Ellie, we did races. Dad, that sounds like fun. Who won? Ellie. Jane did. She is fastest. We're going to imagine that our A-level question is the best way to explain children's language development is to focus on what they use it for. Evaluate this view. So I'm going to give you um, some ideas that you might use based on um, the transcript between Ellie and her dad. So according to Piaget in 1923, explain the theory. A child moves through stages of linguistic development in line with their cognitive development. Ellie is clearly at the pre-operational stage since she is using the past tense in the verb we did to reflect what she has done previously. She has moved beyond the stage where language is used to label or ask for things and is engaging with the more complex idea of time. She also shows an appreciation of seriation in her use of the superlative adjective best. Now, this idea of seriation is putting things in order. So, like good, better, best, or um, filling in the number four, blank, five. So, ideas about that. Um, so, here we have our expl explanation of Piaget and what we found in the transcript between Ellie and her dad. We're looking at past tense and we're looking at um, superlative. We must also then reflect on Piaget's theory um, in order to show our knowledge in the exam. Um, and here I've written a paragraph that would help with this and talks about our evidence. So this evidence supports the theories of cognitive linguists such as Piaget, who explain language acquisition by linking it directly to a child's intellectual understanding of the world. Cognitive theories are effective in the study of how children learn language and underpin much modern research. However, Piaget has been criticised for concentrating research on a very small sample of a select social group. It should also be noted 
that some adults have excellent linguistic skills despite cognitive impairment and vice versa. So there you can see the sorts of things you might want to say when you're using Piaget um, to talk about um, a transcript and some evidence that you've been given in the exam. So thank you for listening today and hopefully um, you've learnt how to understand Piaget and child language acquisition just like Maria.